BTEC Applied Science Unit 2 Colorimetry 2. So this is my second video on the colorimetry task. Now prepare 100 mils, 100 milliliters of a standard solution of 0.4 molar copper sulfate. Your teacher may ask you to prepare a bit more or less, perhaps a, a slightly different concentration. This is what I ask my students to do. Um, now, one thing is use anhydrous copper sulfate, uh, if only because it makes the calculation simpler. You don't have to worry about H2O when you work out the molar mass. So you can make anhydrous copper sulfate by putting it in the oven for a while to dry it out to make sure that it doesn't contain any moisture and it becomes a very white powder. Doesn't, doesn't look very blue anymore. What mass will you need? Well, I'm not going to work it out for you. I will tell you that you use the first triangle, which you should recognize to work out the number of moles that you'll need. And then you can use the second triangle to work out what mass you will need. So I'm not doing all the work for you. That's your job. So preparing the standard solution, here's a, a method for doing that. Zero the scale with the weighing boat on. Uh, by the way, oh, calibrate your scale first. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to calibrate the scale. Uh, look it up, find out. Zero the scale with the weighing boat on. Measure out the required mass of copper sulfate using a spatula. Uh, put about 50 mils of water distilled water in a 250 mil beaker. Add the copper sulfate to the beaker bit by bit while stirring with a stirring rod. Be careful there because if it's anhydrous it might fizz a little bit so add it bit by bit. Don't just chuck it all in or you'll just end up with a, a rock of copper sulfate at the bottom of the beaker. Uh, stir, stir, stir until it's dissolved Pour that into a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. Rinse the beaker and the stirring rod with distilled water and add that to the flask uh, and then top it up to exactly 100 mils. Uh, you should know what a meniscus is. Again, if you don't, look it up. Health and safety. Um, you should do a risk analysis in your report uh, and this is the CLEAPS advice regarding copper sulfate. This is the official advice regarding how dangerous it is. So it's officially dilute. It's dilute copper sulfate. So have a read yourself and you figure out what should be in your risk analysis. And when you actually carry out the experiment, of course. What is Beer's Law? Uh, I'm not telling you. Find out what Beer's Law is. It's very, very relevant to this experiment. Uh, find out what it is. Uh, when you write up your report, uh, the last part of your report is going to be an evaluation. And if you're after a high mark, if you're after a distinction, you have to do a good evaluation. Amongst other things, make sure you have these things. How did you calibrate the balance? How did you calibrate your pipettes? Have a section where you talk about calibrating your equipment. How accurate was the balance? Did it read to the nearest tenth of a gram or a hundredth of a gram? Uh, what was the percentage error in the measurement of the mass? Uh, what other things did you do to make sure that your results were accurate? Uh, in this video, I've been trying to give you some clues about that. Did you repeat any measurements? Uh, you should have done. Uh, and if so, why? Why do we do repeats? Does your concentration graph follow Beer's law? You know what that is now, don't you? Uh, how close was your value for the unknown concentration to the actual value? So ask the teacher what the actual value for the unknown concentration is. And then what was the difference between them and what was the percentage difference between them? And then how could you improve your method to get a more accurate value? Spend a bit of time on that, a nice big paragraph on that. How could you improve your method to get a more accurate value? 
Now, your teacher will give you an assignment brief. Assignment A is actually the colorimetry and the titration together. And you probably won't hand them, well, you shouldn't hand them in un unless they are together. But your teacher will give you the assignment brief. They should also give you the criteria for pass, merit and distinction. I mean, you can always look on the uh, syllabus yourself and see what they are. Uh, read them carefully and make sure that you cover everything. If there's one or two little bits missing, it could cost you uh, a distinction. It could cost you a merit. It could cost you a pass. Make sure everything in there is supposed to be there is actually in there. Your report should be neat. Uh, I suggest font size 11. It should be well structured. So it, there's an introduction uh, and then you've got clear sections with subheadings uh, and then your evaluation at the end and perhaps a conclusion at the end and your graphs are, are neat and well done in pencil. Um, it should be detailed. Make sure that everything is there that's supposed to be there. Detailed, that's the key word for di distinction. They want detail. Your teacher will explain all of this to you. Hopefully you're not just relying on my videos. So listen carefully to your teacher. They'll give you various worksheets and things. Read them carefully, okay? Don't lose them. And one thing your teacher will also give you is a deadline. Don't miss the deadline for handing stuff in, okay? If you've got BTEC coursework that you need to get done before a deadline, that is your number one priority. Get it done, do a good job of it, do it sooner rather than later and get it in before the deadline.